welcome to this on-the-record debate with the candidates for Director General of the World Health Organization. This is the first time in the history of the World Health Organization that the candidates have put themselves into the public domain to face questions from a moderator and from an audience. This is an historic occasion. Welcome to this discussion, enjoy, and we look forward to the next two and a half hours of unprecedented insights into the future of the world's most important global health agency. Each candidate is being given a strict three minute opportunity to explain themselves, their manifesto, and why they should be Director General of WHO. Three minutes, Dr. Bustreo. Why you? <laughs> Why me? I have three qualities. I have the character for being the captain. I have the capacity you're and I have the courage. That's it. Okay, very good. <laughs> Professor Deuce Blasi. For me, the WHO has to be the organization which defines health as a political priority, not only at a technical priority. Dr. David Nabarro. Health is repositioning as part of the broad, multilateral, multisectoral, sustainable development agenda. That's what I'm all about. A WHO that's ready to find its place in the new international system. Dr. Sanya Nishtar, three minutes. My vision centers on three things and I make 10 pledges in support of that vision. Number one, I commit to restoring trust in WHO and ensuring that it is once again the world's leading health agency. Secondly, I pledge to focus WHO squarely on its core mandates. And thirdly, I lay emphasis on partnerships. Dr. Miklos Shoshka. I selected four simple words for my campaign slogan. Better health, stronger WHO. This is simple but interconnected. You know, I'm 100% sure that we can only achieve better health if we have a strong, agile change agent for health globally. Now we're going to go into some questions to our candidates. All of you agree that the World Health Organization needs further reform. What is the single most important reform that WHO now needs and that you will begin to implement as Director General? For me, you know, the uh, Director General and the Regional Directors have to define global strategies for global challenges. And all this strategy has to be in all the regions. It is the same strategy. We don't have to begin again a strategy in the six regions. It's absolutely imperative to continue build on the number of donors that are supporting WHO. So expand the contribution and the number of donors. Work on innovative forms of financing. As a chair, vice chair of Gavi, I've seen the power of those innovative financing. Strong WHO depends on performance. Uh, my uh, number one organizational intervention should be a performance management system. When I'm talking about better performance, I'm sure that that is the key for generating more resources. The instrument for accountability, as Flavia will tell you, she is the sitting ADG, mm -hmm. is the, are the accountability compacts between the director general and the assistant director general. I have studied those in great detail and the indicators outlined for accountability are not specific. There is much potential to, ta to take them to a much granular level, and I believe in extrapolating and putting a layer of risk-based accountability on top of that. Let's recognize that WHO will in future be a curator of a managed network for world health that will involve the expertise within its member states, like all the capacity here in Britain, but also in many other countries, in southern countries who've got growing expertise and much to teach the rest of the world. How will you convince heads of government to sustainably invest in universal health coverage? I think uh, convincing heads of state of the value of health investment uh, is one of the things that is so important and crucial. This is a political act. 
So when you convince heads of state, as I have done in convincing them on the value of investing in women and children, you have to use a range of arguments. I think that it's terrible to see that less than one third of children uh, with a pneumonia uh, in the world don't have access to antibiotics. Is gender equity in global health uh, leadership an important objective for the WHO Director General? If so, what would you do to promote this? I think that we could start with a, um, uh, with a female Director General. We could, um, we could of course, uh, start with the gender represent, uh, balanced gender representation in senior appointments and at all levels. For me, WHO needs to be able to approach issues of health from a 100% feminist perspective. The whole organization needs to be a feminist organization. Yes, I believe that there ought to be greater gender equity in the organization, just as there should be right across the UN. But for me, that's only part of the issue. The issue is whether the organization views issues of health through the eyes, through the hearts, and through the heads that women view them through. And I'd like to see men be encouraged to do that more. What steps would you take to prevent undue influence on WHO from the private sector? Uh, tobacco. In 76 days, we introduced non-smoking regulation in Hungary. We introduced public health product tax, so it is beverage industry, food industry. Uh, then, then we broke down the prices. The generic pharma prices were decreased by more than 75% in Hungary. You have to be brave and uh, you have to take up the challenge with them. Thank you. Thanks very much to the panel. I'd like to wish you all good luck in your campaigns. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you agree with me that you've just seen five very five fine candidates standing for the Director General of WHO. You will have noticed that one was not there, Minister Tedros. Each has a very distinctive vision for the future of WHO. This is a critical moment, not only for the agency, but also for global health. Make up your own minds and decide. The decision will happen next May at the World Health Assembly. Thank you for watching. <laughs>